Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I know my siblings were looking at me and wondering, how in the world did they get Jess up here? <laughs> so you know, I'm the crying baby of the family. I probably will cry because I'm doing this tribute, but that's okay. This is Charles. We're doing it for Charles. And you can blame that one over there for putting me on the program. <laughs> I love my brother Charles. He was not my in-law, he was my brother. He was our brother. And so I am here to give a short tribute from us, the Swan family. Um, Charles was good to everybody. I mean, I don't know anyone that didn't like Charles. He was one of a kind, like Joe said. There will never be another Charles. No, no. Um, but what I wanted in the form of a tribute, I kind of wanted to leave you some things that Charles taught us. And not necessarily him saying it to us. Yeah. It's by his living. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What he did, how he reacted, to others, to us. Charles was very humble. He did not need much. He was fine with his coffee every morning. Maybe had a honey bun during the day. He might have put some, some beans or grains or ham hocks, something on the stove, on bread. It was simple. He didn't need the um, trappings of life. That was not what he was all about. And Charles lived. Just because he didn't like the trappings of life, don't think he didn't live. He lived. Don't think anyone lived life like Charles. <laughs> he lived his life. He was humble. He was kind and generous. Oh my goodness. Charles was the kindest person. He would give you anything, and he would do anything for you. And, and not just anybody, someone he meets on the street. He would, that's just the kind of person he was. He was friendly. Charles knew everybody. He might have been in that wheelchair, but he knew the whole neighborhood, and they knew <laughs> him. <laughs> Yes, he went everywhere in that wheelchair. <laughs> Charles was very, very positive and optimistic. I don't know anybody like Charles, except my husband, Zen. <laughs> Charles, whenever you ask, you would ask Charles, Charles, how you doing? Good. He never said he was doing bad. Never ever complained about anything. All of these years, Charles has been not able to do so much. And do you think you heard one word of complaint from him? Never. He never complained about his disability. He always managed to do everything anybody else could do. Yeah. I don't know how. Yeah. Yes, you did. But he did. Yeah. Charles yeah. would be under a car in a wheelchair yeah. trying to fix a car. I'm like, how in the world is this happening? And that was Charles. He would do whatever he needed to do for you. Really, he would do whatever he needed to do for you. Charles was very loving. He loved his family. He loved our family, the Swans. My brother, my two brothers here, Joe and Bob, his bestest, but especially Bob. Wow. <laughs> 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 so was his best friend right there. <laughs> Who knows what they were going to talk to together. <laughs> Every time I 
always saw him, he would say something about what Barr did or Joe did or Barr gave him or Joe gave him or something he got out of Barr's yard or always. He loved my daughter Keisha. It was his favorite. Keisha was just like another one of his daughters. And she loved him in return. I will never forget Charles in the hospital for the last time. <clears throat> Went to see him. He called me. Jess, Keish, I'm having breakfast with Keish on Monday. I said, oh, really, Charles? I said, Charles, you do know Keisha works at the hospital. <laughs> that went in one ear and out of the ear. I said, no, I'm having, I'm having breakfast with Keish. I'm like, okay, Charles. I called him Keish. I said, Keish, Uncle Charles said that you were having breakfast with him on Monday morning. I said, leave a little early so you can have breakfast with him. Needless to say, she missed breakfast, but she made up for lunch. <laughs> she had better show up at some point in that day. She had better show up. Charles did not worry, let me tell you. And Rosetta wanted to worry about stuff. That was all in her. He did not anything. But like I said, these are life lessons that he taught us. Not by saying how we live and what he did. Do you know, I think, how many years were added to Charles' life? Because he did not worry or stress over anything. He did not. Charles was always helping someone. Always. Let me tell you, Charles was about to have brain surgery. And do you know, he was on his phone looking for a part Oh my God. <laughs> and this, and this is friend James. James, he deputized you. Because he said, James is going to help me fix your car. <laughs> so he helped you, or if he didn't know how to do it, he would find someone else to help you. That's him, that's what he did. <laughs> Charles was persistent. He didn't take no for an answer. He did not take no. He would try, he would try, he would try, and try, and try, and try some more. He didn't give up. I mean, you know that by seeing how far he came when he became disabled. And most people would have just folded and given up. Not Charles. Mm -mm. He was persistent. Charles was not afraid to ask you for anything. <laughs> if he saw something he wanted, what you could do for him. He had no problems asking. <laughs> you could say no, you could say yes, say whatever you want. <laughs> And we can learn a lot from that. If you don't ask, you don't get. So hey, like I said, these are lessons that we're taking from him. This, this is what he left for us. Charles was very, he had a lot of faith. A lot of faith. You know, he didn't talk much about his faith. But he did, um, when he was about to go into brain surgery. Me with my um, pessimistic self said to him, Well, Charles, you know, this is a really big surgery. It can go either way. You know, we don't know how it's going to come out. Charles said to me, Jess, I have a lot of faith. I'm going to come through the surgery. I believe. And he did. With everything. This is not just with everything. That's how he was. He had a lot of faith. Charles was very accommodating to his family and friends. I lived with Rosetta and Charles my first semester in college. Franz lived with Rosetta and Charles. Dee lived with Rosetta and Charles. Bob lived with Rosetta and Charles. Other family members.
members live with Rosetta and Charles. Friends live with Rosetta and Charles. Do you think he ever said to Rosetta, well, you know what, Rosetta, I'm kind of tired of people in and out of my house. <laughs> he did not. Whoever was Rosetta's family and friends was Charles with um, family and friends. And that's how we lived. He, he, we would miss Charles, let me tell you, we would be sorely missed. We loved Charles, my parents loved Charles. They would take Charles' side over Rosetta's any day. <laughs> my aunts and uncles both loved Charles. My, all of my siblings, our children, we loved Charles, okay? He, um, he would be sorely missed, sorely missed. So, I'm going to end with this. A uh, couple of days before I tell them, this is probably where I'm going to cry. A couple of days before Charles passed, I had such an urge to go and see him. And I had a, a few meetings that day, and I called him. I said, Charles, I'm coming to see you. I'm going to bring lunch for you. I said, what do you want to eat? He said, well, whatever you, like I said, he's not picky, he's very simple. He said, just whatever you want to bring is fine. I said, okay. So after my meeting, I went and I got him some soul food, because that's what he likes. I got him some oxtails, some sweet potatoes, some, some greens, one bread. And I would say, not rice with gravy, but gravy with the rice. <laughs> Charles, rest in peace. We will see you again. Yes. Yes. Yes.